Okay guys, I'm Kristen. I'm a real squirrel. I am on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and you can find me anywhere. I am a long time eBayer and thrifter and reseller. So I've been on eBay since 1997, that's 25 years. But I have been sourcing or getting my inventory almost exclusively for about the last 10 years at the bins. So what are the bins and why do I go there? I'm gonna tell you how to use the bins to make the most of your reselling business and to make money going to the bins. What are the bins? The bins are the Goodwill outlet, the warehouse, the bargain barn, the clearance center, the by the pound, or whatever they call it in your area, it's still generically called the bins. So the bins are where you actually do buy the items by the pound. But where do they get these items and why do they go there? What is this thing all about? The bins are where Goodwill sends their items that couldn't make it to the sales floor, meaning there was too many items to process. They had too many donations. They couldn't get to them all. They were items that weren't suitable to put out on the floor, meaning they were broken or they were too damaged or dirty to be able to put out on the sales floor. Or they were out on the sales floor and just didn't sell. So they pull all those items and send everything to the bins. At the bins, they take these items that didn't get processed or didn't sell and they put them into big buckets. And you're gonna buy those items by weight instead of paying for each item individually. When you pay for it by weight, it really does affect the cost of goods. But you have to dig, you have to work to get them. They are not gonna be on pretty little hangers. They are not gonna be in sections necessarily. They are gonna be in bins or boats or totes or gaylords and then they are gonna be in piles. So you have to dig through and find those good items. So instead of sliding the hangers on the rack, you're just gonna be digging this way. Either way, you're gonna be looking for the items that you would put in your store. Each location varies. Prices might be slightly different from one location to another and one part of the country to another, but they can range from 99 cents a pound to 2.59 a pound. It just depends on your location and where you're at in the country. Either way, it's still a good price. And I'll show you at the end why I think it's such a great way to increase your profits online. When you go to those bins locations, there will be a sign that tells you how much everything is gonna be whenever you check out. So it's not gonna be a surprise. You're gonna know roughly how much you're gonna be spending. So at the bins, you're gonna be digging in big, they call them bins or boats or totes. They're dumped into rolling blue, I think they look like troughs on wheels. Um, sometimes they have them in big open totes that are on like pallets. They call those things Gaylords. And you dig through these things to find your items. When I say that you should go and look and dig for these items, I would suggest that you start in the places that you normally would go in the thrift store. If you would go to the shoe section first, like I do, <laughs> you would go to the bins that have the shoes. If you would normally go to the clothing section, you would go to where the cloth is. If you normally look for electronics, you would go over to where, where the wares are. Kitchen items, all those things, you can see them in the bins and you go to that area. So if you normally go to those places, that's where you would start at the bins also. Start where you like to go. If you're looking for items that are profitable, you already know what those items are because those are the items that you would find um, at the art sale or the estate sale or the thrift store. Go to that section, pick out the items that you know that you have information about that you don't even have to research because you just know how much those things are valued at. Uh, maybe in your own hobbies, in your own life, in things that you've already sold. Do what you know, do what you like and that the rest of the information will come easily. When you find the section that you like, those wares, let's say you're in, let's say you're into vintage kitchen items. You'll go over to where the wares are and it could be everything from shoes to books, to electronics, to kitchenware, to glassware. All those things could be in those bins. You might be moving a lawnmower or a vacuum out of the way so that you can get to your crystal vase. You don't know. And each location is different. Sometimes they pull out the glass, sometimes they don't. Most times, they don't. <laughs> if you're looking for 
pillows or blankets, they might be over where the clothing is. Usually they put all the cloth in one place and you can find those things over there and you can dig for those things over there. You don't have to get into the new rotations right away. There are lots of other bins that have already been gone through that still have lots of good stuff in them. If you look around, there is enough stuff out there for everybody. <laughs> if you find something in one of those bins that you think that you might be interested in, just even slightly, take that item, put it in your cart. Later, you can look at it, evaluate it, make sure that it's functioning or it's exactly what you want. You can edit your cart later, but if you don't pick it up, somebody else might, so grab it when you can and while you see it. Once you've put those items in your cart and you think you're gonna go back for more, if you're not by your cart, um, and sometimes they have you station them around the perimeter, against the wall, in a cart area, in a corner somewhere, put a blanket over it. That's just a pro tip. I'm sure that you um, will see other people that will have blankets or covers over theirs. That's just sort of like, stakes your claim, says, hey, this is my spot, don't mess with it. It's just a good practice to get into and it keeps other people from messing with it at all. So here's a few other of my favorite tips and I hope that they help you whenever you go to the bins, maybe for the first time or maybe it's your 15th time being there. It maybe is just something that you might wanna consider doing when you go to the bins. Bring water. Bring a, bring a water bottle, bring a snack. They usually don't have things available for sale, but you're definitely gonna wanna keep up your strength. <laughs> take a water bottle, take a snack, and you'll have those things available to you. You can always go wash your hands before you have your snack, and I would encourage you to wash your hands often. I know I do. Every location that I've ever been to in the last 30 locations, I've always had a bathroom. So go wash your hands, eat your snack. Number two, Wear comfortable shoes. You are almost always on concrete or tile or a hard surface. So I would really strongly encourage you to wear some kind of sneakers or very comfortable shoes. Some locations won't let you wear sandals. You have to have closed toed shoes. So bear that in mind. Definitely make sure that you have on comfortable shoes. If you have long hair like I do, <laughs> tie it up. I always have my hair in a top knot because when you're leaning over and digging in those bins, your hair will be in your face. Tie your hair up out of the way. It just makes it a whole lot easier for the whole rest of the day. Another tip, wear comfortable clothes and clothes you don't mind getting dirty because sometimes it gets a little messy at the bins. I always joke because a friend of mine that goes with me always looks to the nines. He looks stunning everywhere he goes and that's great. That's his personality. I love everything about that for him. He looks great. I always look like I'm going to the garden. I also know that I'm comfortable and I'm not gonna worry about getting my outfit yucky. Bring gloves, that's another tip. A lot of places require gloves. They might only require gloves in the glassware section. They might require gloves in the whole place. Very few of them require it, but when they do, you'll wish you had them. I don't like to wear gloves because I like to feel the quality of the fabrics, whether it's wool or cashmere or satins and silks. I want to feel that quality, but sometimes I wish that I had them whenever I was digging in shoes because sometimes these get a little messy, but definitely bring gloves so that you don't have to buy some when you get to places like Fort Myers or Cedar Rapids. When I go to a new bins location, I always step back and watch the locals because they know all the rules. They know all the tips, the tricks, the secrets, and they know when to shop, when they tell us not to shop, if they clear the floor to do the rotations. There's always a little bit different policies in each location. So just kind of watch the locals and they'll give you the lowdown and make friends with a couple of them because then they kind of take you under their wing and then you know exactly what to do. Another tip I want to give you is that I use the bags that a comforter comes in. One of those big clear plastic bags to help me gather my items and sort my items. I just unzip them, dump out the stuff that's in them and then put my things in them. So if I have a lot of wares, I'll put my wares in one plastic bag and then I'll put my cloth in another plastic bag, but that kind of helps separate things so that whenever you go to checkout, if the prices are different, you've already got things separated and it makes it a whole lot easier to 
sort those items. So at the end of the day or before I get ready to leave, I go through everything in my cart and do an edit. I double check to make sure I have both pairs of shoes or that all the shoes are in good condition or that all the shirts have their buttons and that my cashmere doesn't have any holes in it. I do go through and edit every single thing before I leave. I don't want to buy anything or pay for anything that I don't have any intention of using or reselling. And even though I'm gonna be getting it for such a small amount of money, I still don't wanna waste my money on something I can't use. And last tip for me is always consider how much something is weighing whenever you're sorting. If you find these great roller skates that are so cool that might cost you eight or ten dollars to purchase and you're only going to get maybe 20 or 25 for it maybe might not be the best investment and it might not make it worth it for you to pick those things up so do factor in how much things are going to cost you based on that weight is it a good investment okay so we've collected our items now what let's go pay for them you take your whole cart over to the cash register you put it on the scale, they weigh it, and then they tell you how much it's gonna be. I recently went to the bin and I got 21.4 pounds at $1.27 a pound. Let's see how much is that per item. Okay, so look, I spent $29.08 and I got 32 items. So those 32 items were 21.4 pounds at $1.27 a pound. So if I take those 32 items and divide it into the 2908, that is 91 cents each. Look at that, 91 cents each. It's hard to do that even at a yard sale, guys. That's why I like going to the bins. I can get things at a reasonable cost. Now that I know that my items that I've picked up at this particular bins trip only cost me 91 cents, that's less than a dollar each item. So everything averages out and then I average my cost of goods over the whole year. So last year, my average cost of goods was about $1.50. This will help bring down my average cost of goods. Now, when I go to list an item, that gives me a whole lot more wiggle room when it comes to sending offers and accepting offers because I have such a small cost of goods and the return on my investment is gonna be almost a sure thing. That's why I like to go to the bins. I hope that you guys at least give it a chance and check it out because there is enough stuff out there for everybody. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you're learning some great stuff and I hope that you're doing super great in your reselling business. You can follow me at A Rural Squirrel on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm on Whatnot and I have an eBay and you can find that eBay link in the description of all my videos. I will see you guys next time. I will see you in the bins.